Hey there, folks. Welcome back to the ride that never ends. Uh, so today I've got a kit that I, uh, I swear I just covered in uh, another video. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I've got the uh, M2 backlight kit from uh, Funny Playing here. And um, if you did see my other video on this version of the kit for the Game Boy Advance SP, I'm going to be repeating myself a lot today. Um, you're probably not going to miss much if you skip this. But that being said, as of right now, I actually checked this time, proper, good and proper, um, there are no instructions for installing this. Um, so I guess that's what I'm doing here today. Uh, so we get this kit. This is a laminated kit from Funny Playing. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got here. So like the uh, Game Boy Advance SP version, we've got the LCD directly laminated to a glass lens, this time for the Game Boy Advance instead of the Game Boy Advance SP. Uh, like the other laminated kits from Funny Playing, this is a custom uh, mounting system, I guess. Uh, so the lens itself does have a uh, chamfer on the edge and it's wedge shaped. So this only works with funny playing laminated shells. If you have something like the uh, aluminum, um, machined aluminum Game Boy Advance shell, this isn't gonna work. This is a totally different system, even though this does work with laminated kits. Exactly what's in there. Um, this does not work with funny playing's mounting system. So if you want to get one of these kits, you have to use one of funny playing's shells for better or worse. It is what it is, um, but this is what you get. You get the screen assembly, the adapter ribbon here with uh, three, three, three wires, um, optional button controls. I'm fairly certain this has a touch sensor on there. Yeah, there's a touch sensor on there. You should be able to do all of the controls through the touch sensor, or you can wire up the button controls through uh, right shoulder, left shoulder, and then start or select. Um, but so soldering should be totally optional here, so you can you can skip if you want. Um, but otherwise, you know, pretty familiar loadout here. Just that over there we go. Um, and I'm expecting pretty much identical performance uh, compared to the SP version since. The adapter ribbon is identical, the LCD is identical, and for the most part, the biggest difference between a Game Boy Advance SP and a Game Boy Advance is the form factor, you know, it's more or less the same CPU, blah blah blah, etc, etc. Uh, so let's get on with it. Uh, I am going to... Um... Oh, and here is the bracket, of course, for the funny playing laminated shell it does require the bracket to install. There is no OEM option, unlike the SP version. Today's donor is going to be an older build that I have here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this thing to bits and, um, well, I'm not gonna cut anything to bits. I guess I'm just gonna pull out the old kit and drop in the new one. But I'm gonna go ahead and start up a game because I want to show I want to show off what's going on with the kit in this console. It works totally fine. There's zero issues with it. Not a single problem. It does not matter. And like I always say, or at least I always say in, in text, I haven't started saying it in videos until very recently. The best backlight kit is the one you already have. So me swapping out this kit in this Game Boy is a little bit wasteful, but you gotta, you, you, you gotta keep, Keep your eye on the uh, perspective here. I'm some jerk who makes videos for the internet. I have dozens, hundreds of Game Boys even. Um, there's really no point in me having them all modded. And at some point it just got cheaper to just start taking them apart and modding them again, pretending as if they're fresh builds instead of buying new ones. But the whole reason I have this thing booted up and I'm not tearing it apart yet is I wanna show off what happens when I hit the right arrow in this, you can see there's a little bit of a ripple on the screen itself. Same thing happens when I hit B. It's just how the bracket, how this mounting mechanism was designed for this specific kit. This is 
an old ITA kit that only has button controls. There's no OSD. This is one of the first releases of this era, I guess. I don't know. Um, so it's an older kit. They made newer ITA kits that didn't have this ripple issue uh, and that also had an OSD. So we will be getting some new features by swapping this kit in. But I just want to show you that so that we can compare next time or rather specifically so that we can compare and see if the ripple issue affects this new kit. I don't think it will, but we'll find out, won't we? Um, so even though this is a pre-modified Game Boy, it does already have the funny playing shell, um, so I should be able to mount the new kit no problem. Uh, but also it comes apart basically identical to the uh, original. In fact, I probably don't even need to use this ribbon. I bet it's the exact same ribbon. I'll swap it out anyway, though. So there are six tri-point screws on the back of this thing. Uh, not tri-wing, that is, that is a different screw. Um, or you can call them Y screws. That's certainly what uh, I fix it, and probably most tool manufacturers call them. It's a Y zero bit. Uh, ooh, this one did have a touch sensor. We'll swap this out um, because I know they've revised the touch sensor portion of this at the very least. But I bet. Bet the wiring is identical. We'll try it just for just for funsies. And then on the motherboard itself, there are three or two. Some Game Boy models only shipped with two screws in here instead of all three. Um, they're crosshead, though specifically these are JIS screws, not Phillips. I will have to unmodify this Game Boy. Um, might as well turn on my solder and iron. Disconnect it from this side. And uh, so this comes apart. Rack it up and we can pull the whole screen assembly out and we'll just set that aside for later. So yeah, as, as you can see, the edges of the lens, it's, it's kind of wedge shaped. Uh, so it inserts from the rear and then the bracket holds it in place. I'm just going to set this aside for another day. Um, save it for something. I don't know. Probably end up using it at one point or give it away or something. I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, but I need to go ahead and desolder the button controls for this old kit. That comes right out. And I need to fix my C54 here because this ITA kit that I had in here required modification to the Game Boy itself. It wasn't wasn't just drop in. Um, thankfully, I had the foresight to leave the capacitor inside the Game Boy so that I could just reattach it later. Hey, why are you knocking stuff down, you jerk? I really should stop him. That's a battery he's doing that with. Uh, he already, he already moved on to something different. That's okay. Just, just cat things. 
And of course, I went all day without getting a single Discord message. Now I'm getting... Ow. Now I have several. Okay. Moving on. Got this thing rolled back to stock. Let us quickly do a... Operations check with the original screen here. That way we can get a power usage baseline. Oh my goodness. I had this set aside in case I need to pull a capacitor from it. Ugh. Set this to 2.4 volts. Plug in the screen here. And of course, we always want to start with a uh, working Game Boy so that we know if there's issues with the mod, whether it was the Game Boy or not. I'm fairly confident this thing's working because, you know, I just had it assembled. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, just, just to verify. All right, so at 2.4 volts with Pokemon Emerald here in the overworld, just about the same place I usually test um, with the exact same cartridge. Ooh, this thing's actually kind of high. All right, so at 2.4 volts, this thing is pulling anywhere from 119 to 130 milliamps, which tells me the power switch probably needs to be cleaned, maybe? I don't know, it seems to be stable. Oh, but you see, you see my LED changing. So yeah, this thing definitely needs a cleaned power switch. I'm gonna not do that right now. This is already gonna be a long video. So um, yeah, but as long as we have a baseline, um, should still work. I mean, it's not going to change. As long as I don't change the power switch between this and the next test, we'll have a good comparison here. Put that aside. Okay. This goes in... That doesn't fit on both, does it? That would be real silly of funny playing. Oh, dog, why you do that? All right, which one's which? This is not the connector it goes in. Okay, it doesn't actually fit in there. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so this goes pins down. The screen goes in the black and brown-ish connector. Pins down. And then on the other connector, the white and black one, we will plug in this. Oh, it feels like, oh, that's weird. I thought it goes pins up, but pins down is the only orientation that makes sense. We'll try it pins down, see what happens. And then on the Game Boy side, it's pins up. And this should go something like this. I'm gonna try holding it. Make sure nothing shorts. And yeah, okay, that was right. And we know the kit works. Go into the game, go into the overworld, exact same cart, same everything. The only difference here is the backlight kit instead of the OEM screen. So we were at about 130 milliamps, but this time we're at 300 and 
300 to about 308 milliamps. So quite a bit more, but not horrendously so. I don't know what brightness this is at. This is the, the default brightness. Um, I believe there are 15 levels of brightness, however, and there's quite a big difference between them. Let's see. All right, so all the way at the lowest brightness, I can barely see this thing. I can see it enough to see that it's on. In a pitch black room, maybe this is usable, but in any reasonably well lit area, this is too dark. But it is the bare minimum, and we are at 225 to 230 milliamps. So not quite double the power usage, but getting there. <laughs> Uh, and then, like I said, I believe there are 15, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then at the max brightness, we're at 384 to 392 milliamps. Uh, so this thing can suck down quite a bit of power. Um, at higher brightnesses. For context, at 2.4 volts, this is 0.925-ish watts. Um, that's almost a whole watt. That's, that's a lot. That's a lot for a Game Boy. Um, from the factory, a Game Boy is normally like a quarter watt. So you can, it, the, the, the math does scale relatively linearly though. Um, not quite, not 100%. The low voltage cutoffs are a little bit different. So, but you can still use it for guesstimates. So if from the factory you got 20 hours of battery life and now you're using four times as much power, you'll get less than five hours of battery life. It is what it is. Um, that, of course, depends greatly on what kind of batteries you're using. Like if you're using a battery mod or what I actually recommend, um, rechargeable nickel metal hydride batteries, etc., etc. All depends on personal preference. Uh, we'll go over all of the menu options later. Let me just double check that this is the max brightness. Yep. I'll bring that up a little. And you should be able to get into the OSD by just doing a long press on the touch sensor. And yep, indeed you can. Uh, but we'll go over that later once we've got this thing a um, little bit more stable. <laughs> set aside here and I think I'm gonna unplug here and then we'll just circle back and I really should unplug it here too all right so this is a 40 pin Game Boy, so I'm only using the 40 pin ribbon. It also comes with a 32 pin ribbon. If you have a 32 pin Game Boy Advance version, you can differentiate by uh, just checking it while it's in the shell. Uh, when it's assembled here like this, which by the way, this is a good way to bench test these things. Just throw it back in the rear housing. You've got this ribbon still plugged in and then you can just pop your batteries back in here. Um, but you can tell by looking in the uh, gap between the shell here. Uh, it's hard to make out because my lighting isn't the best for this. But um, I'll just pull this out of the shell here. This little number here, mine says 0, 2. Well, it's hard to see because it's also just straight dirty. Uh, mine says 0, 2, um, dash, or... 0, 2, space, 6, dash, 2. You only, the only digit we care about is the very first one. So since the first one's a 0, this is a 40 pin. If the first digit was a 1, this would be a 32 pin. Uh, sorry, just got to wake up my computer there. I got my cheat sheet up on the screen. I'll we'll need to reference momentarily. Uh, but otherwise, let's go ahead and get these buttons soldered up. Again, this step is optional, but I mean, I want to see if this thing behaves the same as the SP version. 
But also, since we have three inputs instead of one, um, it should give us a little bit more control. We'll see what happens. You can also customize this to the uh, lengths. Uh, so the right shoulder button here is, what is that, TP8? I hate that. I'm going to fix it now. There we go. Left shoulder button, right shoulder button, whatever I said. Uh, I'm going to route this up and around. And just to make the cable management a little bit more reasonable, I'm going to take this wire and thread it under the legs of the CPU. Shouldn't hurt anything. And these are not very susceptible to interference, both the CPU and this wire. Uh, but notice it, it, it keeps things nice and, uh, nice and tidy. There's the right wire. Uh, do be careful though, uh, by default, well I guess that doesn't really apply to these shells, uh, but OEM shells do have a wall that goes right here and makes contact with the motherboard. It's like right about here-ish. Uh, so you need to make sure to cut a little notch out of the wall for that wire to run. Same thing on this side too, I think. I think it's on, I think it's right here. Oh. Makes more sense to be right here. Uh, but either way, do be careful. Check the clearance before you assemble it. Uh, we're going to do select, I think this is. Uh, we're going to do TP2. And I'm going to tin that again because that's going to be another nasty joint if I don't. And uh, you can do the exact same thing with this wire here, run it up under the legs. CPU. That'll keep it nice and managed. Um, I'm going to trim this a little bit. It's just a hair too long. Before attaching that to the ribbon, I don't want it to get in the way of the left shoulder button, so we'll do the left shoulder button first. Get that tinned. Get that soldered. And then this one's a little harder to wrangle can also run it under the legs. And you know what, I'll just leave this one with extra. I think that'll be fine. Nice amount of extra slack. shoulder button and now select 
all of the buttons on this console are wired in the exact same manner. Uh, so you don't have to do left shoulder button, right shoulder button, and select. You could just do like B up and down or something if you want. Um, it, it will just work with one caveat. Uh, the caveat is if you have to be able to press all three buttons at the same time for any button combos with the kit itself, well, you have to be careful with the D-pad because you can only press like up and right at the same time or right and down at the same time or down and left at the same time or left and up. You can't do left and right simultaneously or up and down simultaneously. The little nubbin on the bottom of the D-pad here exists specifically to prevent that. Peel that off. So this goes in the shell just like that. Oh, and unlike on the SP version, these tabs are still flat, which makes sense. Tabs shouldn't be necessary for locating this. All right, now orienting this bracket. Let me set this down. Let me turn that off. This bracket only fits one way. The orientation is not immediate, immediately obvious, but the three tabs here go on the top, whereas these two tabs go on the bottom here. I think that's it. And before I continue talking about orientation, let me double check that I actually have it right. Pull start and select out for now. Hmm. I guess not. Try it flipped around. Yeah, I got lucky with the SP one because I could just reference the pictures that already exist. Yeah, I don't think this is it either. I think maybe I had it right the first time. Yeah, I think I had it right the first time. This isn't quite fitting. That doesn't look. Funny playing would do well to mold into the bracket itself which side is which, but I suppose it's not too bad once you've got it figured out. And now you guys all have a reference. Oh, I see what the problem is. That's on the wrong side. There we go. All right, it's fiddly, but once you've got it, once you've got the orientation figured out, it's not so bad. All right, so when you're looking at the back, of course, the three tabs on top and then the shaved side towards the right. And don't forget your LED light pipe. Mine's already in there. Um, pins down, I thought I said. Know if I want to stick this down yet until I know that I've got the alignment proper. What doesn't help is 
I think my bracket's a little bit warped, so it keeps wanting to dance onto the other side of this tab here, and then it doesn't fit when it does that. Hold that down, get that lined up, and then I think it might not matter, but I think the bracket goes on top of the ribbon here. I'm gonna pull the bracket out for now. Fold this over. Get that connected. And then do a dry fit here. Make sure everything fits. Good. I'm going to flip that up. No, the ribbon is in the right place. All right. It's not the end of the world if I totally blow this alignment, but. Would prefer to get it right the first time, you know? I'll go right there. Oh, gotta get the bracket in first. Oh, okay, this is weird. I'm wondering if maybe it's a good idea to just omit that adhesive. Just, you know, don't peel that off, maybe. All right. comes the most fiddly bit. Getting this in that order assembled. Ugh. And of course it just unstuck itself anyway. Oh well. Fix it later. That's in there. Drop my start and select back in. And then the touch sensor. Let's get that in. Also has a little bit of adhesive. This should go on the shell. Need to make sure it's installed so that it is only touching the front half of the shell. If it is straddling the gap, it's not gonna work very well. down again. Ugh. It is not sticking though. All right, that's fine. That's fine. We'll work through that. Oh, that's not even for this kit. I need where's my scissors? I can tell that the kit 
is going to cause problems because it's resting right up against the board. And I don't like that. So I'm going to drop in that little piece of card here. And that should hopefully insulate everything nicely. And before I secure that, I'm going to secure the motherboard. I already had screws in here. I've already got threads. Uh, I don't need to re-thread these screw posts. That's a good way to ruin them. So I'm just gonna run that screw in reverse until I can feel it click into the threads and then I'll send it home. And again, it's just plastic. We don't need to we don't need to really reef on it, you know? Just just snug and then back a quarter turn is good enough. And that one I think I already messed up, so we'll just commit. All right, there we go, that's not bad. Everything seems to be fitting properly. And this card it doesn't seem to be going anywhere, so I'll just leave it as is. If yours, of course, sticks to the screen, then you don't have to do that. Mine isn't though, so. We'll just play it safe. I am somehow missing a screw. There's only five here, there should be six. I don't know how that happened. No big deal. I'm sure I have another screw around here somewhere, but I just don't know what happened to the one that's supposed to be here. I'm sure I'll find it as soon as I end the video. Don't worry about it. It's not important. I'll just omit this one for now. And then the short screw goes in the battery compartment. And, uh, Bob Gianti. Oh, there's the screw. Well, that's a problem. <sighs> Thanks, funny playing. Love it. I fully expected to run into issues. I ran into some on the SP version of this kit. I did not expect to run into that issue.
it just seems kind of silly that we put a sensor that is designed to s detect changes in capacitance. Ooh, I never actually had it stuck down. That could have been the problem. Okay. I'm complaining about a design when I didn't even install it properly. Okay, I'll just shut up. That's what I get for not checking my work, huh? Regardless, I still stand by what I was about to say. I think it's silly that we put a sensor that detects changes in capacitance right next to high-speed um, LCD data lines. But hey, that's, that's just my two cents on the matter. There is no reason we cannot cut off and relocate that touch sensor, um, except that it's close proximity to the LCD lines will never change because guess what's on the same ribbon? Now it's just going to work. Watch. Not a single issue. Everything's going to work. All the weird stuff I encountered on the SP is not going to be relevant here. It's not going to just randomly change brightnesses on me. Huh? Huh? I don't know. It's better. I think it still changed on its own though. Okay, good enough. <sighs> Let me get, let's get a test run mode. See what's going on. GBS. I don't remember if that's the right one. You see, I'm just holding L and R and my brightness is cycling. But my buttons are working proper. Okay, so it looks like when we're in the OSD, if I have the brightness controls actually wired up. It's just L and R to increment and decrement and then select to move to the next option. I like that. That's really nice and intuitive. And then all three to close it. It's kind of weird though. Um, I feel like I opened it just by hitting, so yeah, select and R. That doesn't seem right. Oh, I guess it is. I guess you don't need to hit all three. Hitting all three closes it, though. Bizarre. Okay, so let's step through the options here. Um, I feel like that's backwards, maybe? I feel like R should be up, not down. And L should be down. Regardless, zero reason you can't just swap the two wires internally. All right, so let's talk about these options here. BRT is, of course, brightness. There are the same 15 levels um, that you get through the touch sensor, and you can also use the touch sensor to cycle through these. A medium press will get you to the next option, and then a short press lets you change the option, and then a long press will let you close the OSD. Just like a short press here will cycle up through brightness, a medium press will cycle down through brightness, and then a long press will open up the OSD. Uh, exact same as SP here. Um, so brightness, of course, 
Uh, next option is CLR or color effect as Funny Playing calls it, which I'm reading this off of the SP installation tutorial from Funny Playing that I yesterday said didn't exist, but today I am more wise and know that it's actually been up on Funny Playing site for at least two weeks now. <laughs> uh, that's just me missing the big text. I'm sorry. Anyway, option two is... Uh, color effect. So first option is normal mode. Uh, second option is high contrast mode. Third option is retro color mode. Fourth option is grayscale color mode. And fifth option is GB green mode. Um, except you probably can't tell very well what's going on in that. So let's switch it over. You see it's cycling brightness again. Hmm. Funny playing, please. Now, I'm sure it's not my fault. It's actually adhered how it's supposed to be. I'm not sure it's not my fault. I'm fairly confident it's not my fault. All right, so we'll go into the color bar test. And I'll oh, up the brightness so you can see that nicely. And then, so here's what it looks like on normal color mode. Um, this second one is high contrast mode. Uh, third one is retro color mode. You do lose a little bit of bit depth with this option. You see there are half as many divisions in the color segments. Uh, fourth option is grayscale. I don't know that I care for this very much. And then fifth option is green scale or GB color mode, which is just gray scale, but with a green filter um, with the Fallout 3 filter on it. Um, I don't know. We'll leave that on one for now. DSP is display effect. As Funny Playing says, first option is just looks like integer scaling. We have a 3x scale. This is a 720 by 480 LCD. Second option is kind of weird. It's um, funny playing says its interpolation algorithm is shown, but really it's just kind of blurry. I don't know what that's about. Uh, and then the third option is the first option, but with horizontal pixel grid emulation, there is no vertical pixel grid emulation. And I actually have, a, I'm, I'm prepared this time to talk about that and discuss why. Uh, so after I did the SP kit yesterday, I went ahead and put it under a microscope and took some pictures here so you can see what the sub pixel layout looks like on these screens. And you can see, um, you know, e e each of these little squares right here is a red, green, blue RGB LED sub pixel layout, but you can see each pixel is kind of offset from its neighbor. Uh, so because of that, we can't, we, we just can't do a vertical pixel grid emulation on this thing, which is kind of a bummer, I guess. I mean, I'm not that torn up over it. I don't really care for the filter that much, um, but I know I am not alone in that feeling, or I... there are people who disagree with me, and I am sad for you if you are one of those people. Uh, this next picture is scaling option two. You can see things just get a little bit blurry. Um, not the greatest. I don't really care for it, but maybe you'd like that. I don't know. More power to you, I guess. And then the third option is the first option, but with the horizontal pixel grid. Um, and you can see how that looks. We go from 3x integer scale to 2x plus 1, I guess. 2, two plus 1x. <laughs> Something like that, but yeah. I will, of course, have a link to the Imager album in the description. There's lots of good stuff in the description. You're missing out if you're not reading them. Um, Close-ups and, you know, regular distance viewing. Um, next option we have is FRM. Uh, if this is anything like the SP kit, it says it's off, but it's really on. We'll talk about that more in a moment. And then the last option, CG, is color gamut, according to Funny Playing. Uh, the first option is warm colors, the second option is ordinary colors, and then the third option is highlight, 
and then in parentheses it says turns all white pixels on to make them the brightest. Um, I don't know. It depends on what specific game you're playing. I think there's a lot of personal preference involved here. I don't know which one I like, and even then it depends on you know what other options I'm using, like if I have the pixel grid emulation on, which most of the time I don't, but sometimes I turn it on for videos and then forget about it, and then forget the button combo to turn it off. <laughs> um, but I, I don't know, it depends on the specific game. And it's all personal preference there. Uh, and then that's about it. I guess let's go ahead and talk about the FRM feature. So if you've seen any of my other backlight video videos, back, backlight kit videos, there we go. Um, you've probably heard this spiel about a million times, but here's a million and one. So the Game Boy originally, and probably all models for that matter, just didn't have any way of doing transparency in a sprite. Uh, but the Game Boy also had horrendously bad screen um, pixel response times. So the pixel response times in the original screen were just so bad that devs were able to take advantage of that fact and flicker sprites on and off at 60 hertz and that actually resulted in a nice transparency effect. So you can see, if you're paying attention to the background of this game, not the foreground, we're not talking about the, the little red ships and such, but the green, come on. But the, the, the green happenings in the background. Let's turn that up. Oh, come on. Fucking touch sensors, man. All right, maybe I did something wrong. I really hope I did something wrong, but this is ridiculous. We're gonna address this right now. I know we can modify this. Uh, look at the SP one, cause it's in a nice clear shell and I don't have to pull it apart. This I see right up here, U3, right under the bracket. I am fairly confident that is the touch sensor I see. Um, I will have to look at one of these a little bit more closely when we have this thing pulled apart. There should be a capacitor right next to it that we can either remove or replace and adjust the sensitivity of the sensor. Additionally, we can also just remove the IC entirely and then just not have touch sensors. That would be fantastic, wouldn't it? I'm sorry, I know I was in the middle of saying something, and that is totally gone now. I just don't see what this could possibly be. I don't, I don't see why this is going wrong. One would assume that Funny Playing had tested this, and why this is not working for me, but presumably working for them, is unknown. What we're gonna do is we're gonna slip this little touch sensor bad boy out. Uh, I'm gonna make sure it's nice and tight. I'm gonna relocate it even further over. I'm really tempted to just remove it entirely, but I'm concerned that that won't solve my issue. It probably will, but if it doesn't, I'm in trouble. Ugh. I need multiple tools for this. I'm gonna pull it taut with the tweezers and then stick it down with the spudger. How about that? The 
fact, while we're in here, we're going to go one step further. And that's way too long. It's probably way too tall. And we're going to stick that between the ribbon and the touch sensor, and hopefully... Now, when I put this thing back together, I just have no issues and it just works. Wouldn't that be great? Okay. Try again. So anyway, as I was saying, I totally forgot where I left off, uh, but the original Game Boy did not have a way of doing transparency. And because of the terrible pixel response times on those original screens, devs figured out that uh, you can actually just flicker a sprite on and off to create a transparency effect. Um, this has the downside of effectively limiting your sprite rendering to 30 frames a second instead of the native 60-ish, 59.7, whatever, we'll round up to 60. Um, but it usually doesn't really matter. Um, I don't know. It, it kind of blends together. You don't quite notice it so much, even though it's technically different. You know what I mean? But anyway. Um, and yeah, you, you get a nice transparency effect. Uh, but the problem is modern screens have uh, much much better pixel response times, and so you actually just see what the devs were doing instead of the intended effect. So instead of getting nice transparency, you get flicker flicker. It doesn't quite look so good. Let's put that over there. Oh, one more screw. And if this still doesn't work, I'm just going to huck this thing across the room and end the video right here. No, I'm not going to do that, but I really want to. Let's see how many times we can take apart and reassemble the same Game Boy in one video. done being unreasonable, and starts just working properly. Okay, so now my FRM is set to on, um, and I know that this particular kit is a little bit buggy with its labels, so it's probably actually off. And now you see my background is, uh, Nice and flickery there. Um, that doesn't work so well paused, but uh, with everything moving, you can see it a little bit better. In the preview uh, that I'm looking at through my phone here, I don't see that it's coming out very well. Um, in fact, in my preview, it doesn't look flickery at all, and I can't remember if it actually comes through on video, uh, but trust me when I say in person, it is nice and flickery. Um, and also, like I said, the OSD option is just straight wrong. So on means off, and then off means on. So now that I've switched that to off, which is really on, um, the flicker is gone. Oh, I set myself up for failure on that one. Um, yeah. All is well. Everything looks good. It's fine. Uh, that being said, uh, unless you're playing a game that is actually affected by this quirk, I don't really want to call it an issue because it is an intentional design choice on the dev's part. It, unless you're playing a game like Zass that has that specific quirk in the design, um, probably leave it off because it does effectively limit the actual render frame rate of the game. So if I boot back into a Pokemans game, 
and uh, run around a little, maybe you'll be able to see what I'm talking about here. We'll get into the over... New game? What? Oh! Oh! There should be like an hour's worth of progress. I'm actually upset about that. I'll deal with it later. Stupid flashcards. The battery's probably dead in my stupid EverDrive. Anyway, in an actual game that doesn't rely on batteries for saves, um, oops. We have FRM set to off in the OSD, which means it's actually on. You can't really see it by comparison, but maybe if you look close enough, you might be able to tell. As I'm running around looking at the the, uh, the buildings pass me by, I can see them, they're kind of blurry, you know? It's not exactly sharp. This is actually pretty reminiscent of how the uh, AGS-101 looks, like, in real life, because the pixel response times on those screens are also absolutely terrible. Um, probably one of the worst models out of all Game Boys. Um, it's very blurry. Very, very blurry. Uh, but, since this game doesn't really have anything that is affected by um, that issue, oops, that quirk, that is to say nothing is really flickered for transparency, we're, we're gonna go ahead and turn it off, and I'm gonna run around again on foot so that it's the same speed. And you can see, just, you know, you can actually read the text on the buildings as, as they scroll by. It's not blurry anymore. The blur filter's gone. Um, the objects in motion are much more sharp now on screen. And that, I think, is the better experience. I think sharper is better than blurry, but I guess if you want something that emulates authenticity, then maybe just leave it on all the time and... and and shut up about it. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's it's fine. It is what it is. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. Um, I did try and go through all of the color options. I'm going to go through them again real quick. Just so you see here. I already forgot what these are. Please refer back to my previous statements like 20 30 minutes ago in this video um i'm pretty sure one was normal colors two was high contrast and three was retro colors so i'm guessing this three retro color option is the the muted color option the desaturation as it were that um a lot of people have been asking for in these kits um the issue is these original screens here we're not backlit. There's there's no light in this screen. If there's no light to be reflected off of the reflector behind it, you just can't see it. That's that's how LCD screens were back in the day. Back in my day. Um, and so they were just kind of dark. Um, Game Boy Advance screens in particular were darker than Game Boy Color screens that came before them. Uh, so it, you know, more of the same, but even worse. Um, but to compensate for this darkness, a lot of the times devs would oversaturate the colors in their games so that it looked a little bit more normal when you actually viewed it on real hardware. Uh, the problem is with those oversaturated colors, these screens are actually really faithful at reproducing that. And then the games look quite oversaturated. In my personal opinion, I like how it looks. I don't mind it. It's it's pleasing. Uh, it's what I'm used to. It's it's fine. It is. It, it's good. I like it. But if you don't share that opinion, now you have options. Congratulations. But yeah, I think that's gonna all depend on your personal preference and the specific game you're playing. Uh, and then, of course, there are the, the CG color gamut options. Uh, I guess two was normal colors. I've already forgotten what one and three are. Oh, yeah, three is the increased brightness. I don't know. Actually, I kind of like that. 
Color option three with color gamut option three. Color effect with color gamut. I don't know, it's kind of nice, soft, pastel-like. Would have looked really good with that ROM hack that I was going to show off, but I just lost all of my progress on. <sighs> I just caught a Ralts. Oh well, it is what it is. I wasn't that far in. But yeah, I don't know. Looks pretty good. I certainly don't have issues with it. I think once Funny Playing gets some of the quirks worked out, this is actually going to be a pretty reasonable kit to get. Um, at the very least... Ah, oh, shoot, I was supposed to grab a 720 from uh, the one chip to compare these, and I totally neglected to set that aside. I'm actually going to go see if I can find one of those things. I don't know. I don't remember what Game Boy I put it in. Hold for a moment. Well, thank you for holding. You're such a sweetie pie. I found two Game Boys, uh, both with the same kit. I found an SP that is laminated and already has batteries in it, and then a Game Boy Advance that is not laminated, and I'm not going to bother putting batteries in it, because let's do apples for apples and use the laminated kit to compare it to a laminated kit. Uh, oh. This probably still has my regular emerald save. So the reason I wanted to compare this kit, this is the competitor's kit. Uh, it's the same resolution, 480 by 720. Um, also offered in laminated options. Though the GBA one that I have assembled is not laminate. I think maybe one of the aluminum ones. I don't know. We'll go over in front of the gym because that has more color. Oops. So uh, hopefully you can see this nice and Nice and clear. Oh, I should probably bump the brightness up so they're about the same, huh? Yeah, it looks good. So, which, which one do you like better? Um, that's what you gotta ask yourself. There's color modes on this one, but this one doesn't have any of the desaturation. Uh, I think think there's a newer version of this kit that does have the desaturation um, feature, uh, or if not yet, there will be soon. I'm, I'm getting facts mixed up, but otherwise, you know, there's no real, there's no effects. Like, we can change the brightness. This thing gets a lot brighter than the other, than this does, but it's also quite a bit more power hungry. Uh, the color filters, but... Realistically, I don't, I don't think there's any good filters in there. Uh, and then the pixel effects. So we've got no pixel grid, um, vertical and horizontal pixel grid, vertical pixel grid, and just horizontal. But I'm just going to leave it off. It's off on both kits. And that's all the settings, so I'm just going to change the funny playing settings now. And we can go into color set that I believe this is the default there and actually you know what I kind of like that uh, yeah color effect option one is normal mode and color gamut option two is ordinary colors so I mean even the default colors I think I think this one's looking a little bit better and it's not even the brightness, you know? I can bring the brightness up so that they're comparable. I don't know, something, something about 
whatever this thing's doing, it's a little bit more, there's more, there's just more color. It's weird. I guess it depends on your personal preferences there. this one warm colors I guess that makes it a little bit more I'll set it to warm colors and high contrast and yeah, it's looking more similar yeah I don't know you tell me whatever you like um I will say, depending on which features you have enabled, the effective brightness of this thing does go down. As you can tell, I haven't adjusted the brightness. It's maxed out, and this one just looks brighter. Uh, I don't think this one's maxed out. Yeah, this, this one's on 9 of, I think, also 15? Yep, also 15. leave that on nine though but yeah I don't know it's pretty good I'm cautiously optimistic I think funny playing still has some quirks to work out uh, but I think once they've got it you know when, once once they've got a v2 of this thing <laughs> uh, that, that's probably good enough um, I seem to have solved my touch sensor issue with um, the card that was shipped with it. <laughs> uh, I also seem to have solved my insulation issue with the same card, so it's not all bad. Um, there, there are some quirks to work out, uh, but anyway, I guess I gotta wrap up here. Um, I can keep rambling, but I think I've said all that I need to say. Um, one thing I am noticing, oh no, the viewing angles on both of these are actually really good. Obviously you lose brightness, but not that much. I don't know. Um, I'll link to this kit, the one that I did in the, in a GBA, um, if you want to check that out. I'll throw a link to that in the description and I'll try and go back and edit my SP video with a link to this vi with this build. Um, I've got it up on screen right now, so shouldn't shouldn't be too bad to do. Um, but otherwise, I don't know. It's looking pretty good. I think once Funny Plane gets these bugs sorted out, it'll actually be a pretty good kit. Um, right now, like I said, the OSD is not... It annoys me that the FRM setting is reversed. Like, that seems like something that should have been easy to test and they could have fixed easily. Uh, when I did the video on the SP version of this kit, I was complaining about the lack of the vertical pixel grid emulation. But now that I've looked at this thing under a microscope, I see now that that was probably an intentional omission. Um... I don't know. It's fine. I think they need to bake the touch sensor functionality a little bit longer, and then they need to fix the OSD, and then then we'll probably have a pretty good kit worth using. Um, this is IFA 40 v 1.1. I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted. This is IFA 32 v 1.8, so it's several revisions old, but I bet these are interchangeable. I should have tested that. I'm sorry. I neglected to. Um, oh, well. You'll just have to take my, my hunch as fact. Anyway, I need to get out of here. I need to finish this up, get this uploaded, and, and, and move on. Um, big shout out to Retro Game Repair Shop for sending this my way to check out. Um, this is not currently listed on either Funny Playing's website or Retro Game Repair Shop's site. The Game Boy Advance SP version is up on both. 
I don't recommend buying that version either until they've got these exact same bugs sorted out. Um, oh, while I'm at it, let's test one more thing. Um, when I was using the SP version of this kit, my button controls would stop working whenever I was playing a Game Boy Color game. That is not the case on the Game Boy Advance version, it seems. Or, yeah, yeah, Advance as opposed to SP. It's weird, the button combos, though. I wish they'd go back to how the older kits worked um, and give us quick, quick features. So if you hold select... Oh. I've been using this wrong the whole time. What do you know? So, I guess that's why that works the way it does, and me just hitting L and R buttons was... Uh, a coincidence. So you hold select to open up the OSD, um, but on older kits you used to be able to hold select and then tap L and R to adjust brightness without having to go into any menus or anything like that. Um, I think the one chip kits still work that way if you have them wired up. I'm not 100% sure, don't quote me on that. Uh, at least their older ones do, I don't know about the new ones. That's weird. Okay, I feel better about that. It seemed weird that I could press select and R to open the OSD, but that makes more sense. I feel like there should be a longer delay though. It's like barely a second. I don't know. I'll recommend they change that, but if you think that's a bad idea, then uh, let me know. I'll, I'll do that tomorrow, and I plan on getting this video uploaded today, so today, the 31st of August. Um, I don't know. I like it. I think there's some quirks that they need to work out, but anyway, moving on. Getting distracted once again. Um... Circle back. Thanks again to Retro Game Repair Shop for providing this kit for me to check out. Um, I will go ahead and link to their stuff in the description as soon as they start carrying this at the very least. Um, I will link to some older videos if you want to check out like the uh, one chip equivalent, the, the competitions kit. Um, link to the SP version of this thing if you want to look at the bugs on that one. Uh, it seems to have more bugs, at least with button controls being uh, one input versus the three on the Game Boy Advance. I don't know what that's about, but at least it works on this one. Um, yeah, as of right now, this is not listed anywhere. I don't know how much it's going to be. I don't expect it to be priced very differently than older other kits, or even the SP kit for that matter. Um, I... Uh, that being said, unlike the SP kit, you do need to purchase Funny Playing's shell to use with this kit. This kit does not work with other shells. Um, you cannot use your original shell. It's just not going to work. There's no way. You're never going to match this cut. <laughs> it's just not possible to freehand that. And unless you have the CAD, you know, the, the, the DXF drawing for this specific shape, there's no real way to machine that out either. Um, their shells, totally fine. Everything's reasonable. I recommend them. They're good. But just keep that in mind. If you want to use Funny Playing's laminated kits, you have to use Funny Playing's laminated shells. No ifs, ands, or buts. Um, unless you're just like totally built different and you can freehand that cut, which DM me because I'm I'm genuinely curious about how that looks. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, some good stuff. Uh, check out links in the description. I will update the description. I promise I will update the description as soon as these kits are fixed. Um, check that. There's always good info in there. Um, I do occasionally make mistakes during the filming of my videos. That happens more frequently than I'd like to admit. Uh, I usually catch them pretty quickly, but sometimes there's not much I can do about it. Um, 
You know, sometimes I catch them after filming uh, and have to make a correction in the description itself. Uh, sometimes I'll pin a comment for that sort of thing, but usually that goes in the description. But anyway, that's about all I've got. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking with me. I know this was a long one. They, they've been trending that direction for a while anyway. Um, and I know I skipped quite a few of the tests that I usually do, but I did most of them when I did this video. If you really want to go look and watch me do the, the, the scrolling horizontal or vertical bar test, you know, that's work. Um, I even played through a level on Super Mario World and it seems fine as far as input lag goes. Everything seems good. Um, but one more thing I do want to add. This is coming at some point, I promise. I do have actual hardware to test um, the input lag on these things. This is a custom cart made by um, a absolutely brilliant member of the community who goes by Orange Glow. Uh, you might have heard of him from his FM cart that he recently released, but he also made this thing. It is a relatively simple ROM, and the hardware itself is also pretty simple. But the thing is, it just it refreshes one time a second, it counts the frames, you hit A, the whole screen changes, and the LED comes on. That's it. That's all it does. But the whole point is, I can put a high-speed camera to this thing and count the delay between when the screen changes and when the LED changes, to do any sort of lag testing. Of course, this is probably not the LED I want to use, what with its built-in flashing mode, but I just have this for, for showing off because it's fun. Um, but the problem is, I don't have a high-speed camera. I have a cell phone. I can use the cell phone, but the frame pacing on the cell phone is not consistent. So yes, I can count the frames, but until when I count the frames and I get the same number every time, this, this just isn't a usable setup. So yes, it's something I'm working on. I already have hardware capable of doing this testing. Um, well, some hardware, not all of it, clearly. Um, I'll get there eventually, but today's not that day, and I, I don't need a comment on every single video telling me how to do it. I already know how to do it. We're already there. I just... The problem is with the measuring equipment that's not consistent. Um, getting a value that can't be repeated is even worse than getting no value at all. So I've been giving you no values and we'll, we'll call it even. Um, beyond that, I haven't updated my spreadsheet in a while or the wiki um, regarding power usage and like all the backlight kits and whatnot. I'm gonna try and get to that but it's probably not happening this weekend, no promises. It's probably not happening anytime soon, but I will try and get to it at some point. I know, trust me, it's on my to-do list. I just, so much stuff, so little time. You know how it is. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. I'm done rambling. I gotta get out of here. Um, catch us all later. Uh, keep keep on being awesome. Um, I don't know, I had something fun to say, but I've it's been hours and I've totally forgotten, so... I don't know. See you next time. Peace.